Hey everyone, it's Courtney Shavante back again with another amazing tutorial for you guys. Today I'll be showing you guys how to make this adorable resin clock. And yes, it does work. Before we get started, make sure you do hit that subscribe button for me. Don't forget to like and comment if you do have any questions. So we're going to be starting with this 8 inch circle tray mold. I did find it on Amazon, so I'll make sure I link it below. Um, the first thing we're going to be doing is we're just going to be adding a bit of resin into that rim. Um, use the heat gun to thin that resin out and make it nice and thin so that way when we put this chain in here that we have off to the side, it doesn't have any issues sinking to the bottom. You're also going to use a toothpick and just kind of drag it around, make sure you get any um, trapped bubbles to lift up so that way they don't create any holes in your casting. From here, you're going to take your pre-measured um, chain and you're just going to go ahead and place that into the rim carefully. Make sure you get exactly how you want it because once it cures, there's absolutely nothing you can do about how it looks. Right, make sure the ends of those pieces are kind of slightly overlapping each other so that way um, on the final casting you're not able to tell. Then from there, after we get it adjusted and everything, we're just going to be letting that stand for some time. Alright, after that has had a chance to set and everything, what I did was I used a toothpick and I put a little dot right in the middle of my tray using some acrylic paint so that way when the final casting is done, I'll know exactly where the middle point of this is. Here you see me just mixing up this clear resin right quick so that way I can go ahead and pour a nice little layer on here. Um, I'm starting with a small little bit first and then of course I'm going to get my trusty heat gun and I am going to go ahead and thin that out and pull it out so that way um, it creates a nice little thin layer. Now I'm going to place my foil of course face down on top of this. I want to get it as close to the mold surface as I can. That's why I did thin that resin out using the heat gun. So that's really going to help out from here. I'm going to further push out more resin um, by you know just kind of scraping my fingers across and whatnot um, making sure it's pressed down firmly. And then I pour some on top as well because you want that to set nicely and you're going to create a nice even coat of that. Make sure it's pressed down firmly on all sides. You want that foil to be nice and even so you don't want the ends of it poking up. All right, don't be afraid to use the heat gun when you do have the foil in there. Just make sure that you don't aim directly on top of the foil for a long period of time because that can cause your foil to start to break apart and you don't want that because it will look like little confetti pieces, um, sort of like glitter in the front, but it will leave a hole in the design and so it will be kind of obvious it won't be pretty as pretty as that sounds. Alright, so from here I am going to be taking my alcohol ink and I just place that in a circle on the outside rim and everything because we all know that that alcohol ink is going to move around and whatnot. That's what it's known for. Use that toothpick, kind of create some dragging and wispy motions going around there so that way we have this nice little cloudy black smoky rim going along here on this layer. It's going to look sort of like a background to this foil and make it pop as well since it's going to be sitting behind. After that, we're just going to let that stand for a few hours. After that's had a chance to sit, you are going to prepare um, 75 milliliters of resin approximately. Um, from here, you're going to go ahead and add in your white mica powder. This one does add create a nice little pearlescent finish which is very very pretty so make sure you mix that up really well you don't want it to have any clumps or anything like that so make sure it's mixed nicely use your heat gun to thin that out it'll also help pop the bubbles if there's any air trapped in there that can cause bubbles and um clumping as well so that helps out 
Here I'm adding some white opaque alcohol ink so I can make sure the cloth is not see-through. I do not want it to be like, you know, super transparent or anything like that. That's not the look I'm going for, but if you are, that's fine. I pre-mixed some glitter as well, so I'm just adding in a few scoops of that. So that way I can um, get that mixed in. So we're going to make sure that we get that mixed thoroughly. Like I said, it's glitter, these powders, they can create air bubbles and pockets, and you do not want that. So here I'm pouring in the remaining of that 75 milliliters of resin that I had prepared. Every time that I mix up my colors, or at least I try not to anyway, I try to mix up half of the resin with the color just because it makes it easier to mix that color through, make sure it's mixed through nice without any bumps or lumps or anything. And then I pour in that remaining resin because from there it's just mixing in clear resin. So now I am just going to pour this in a nice even layer across the back so it's going to create this... Um, beautiful effects like I really just love the whole 3d look and whatnot so scrape the cup because we don't have a whole lot of this color and we only made 75 because we have to add on another layer um, so we're going to make sure that we get all of that from that tiny little cup and then we're going to be using our heat gun to even that layer thin it out and make sure there are no holes or anything like that and we want our glitter to be like you know nice and towards the um, front of this layer so we're kind of pushing it down towards the surface of that mold, basically. Yeah, go around nice and nice and nice. And then, of course, once we're finished with that, you're going to spray with your alcohol spray. And then we're just going to let that stand for a few hours. All right, so we gave that a full day to cure. So we're going to prep about 80 milliliters of resin right here. Um, after I did that off camera, the stirring and whatnot, but I am using two part epoxy resin. I am adding in my mica powder into the cup that I'm going to be putting the color into. And then I, of course, like I said previously, I am mixing in half of that resin so I can make sure I get all the lumps out and get it mixed thoroughly. I want to make sure I create a nice black opaque background. Um, so I'm going to also be adding in some of that black opaque alcohol ink, which is similar to that white one that we used earlier to do the same thing to get a similar effect. So make sure that's mixed in nicely because that alcohol ink does have the tendency to sit at the top, pour in the remaining resin and make sure that's mixed thoroughly. Scrape the sides of it and once you finish with that, I want you to go ahead and, uh-oh, wasn't finished. Okay, so get the rest of that resin out. My bad, y'all. <laughs> Do, 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 do. all right so now this is the part where we are going to be pouring the even layer so just go ahead and pour that all around here make sure it's nice and even you want to get every drop of that resin out because we did make sure that we took the time to make sure it's mixed thoroughly so we don't have to worry about um, any stickiness later or anything All right, of course, you're going to use your heat gun to spread that out and make sure it's nice and even. I love how this black looks. It's so pretty. It's so regal looking. Creates a nice mirror effect as well. You can see the reflection of the heat gun as I blow. All right, so of course, we're going to spray with our alcohol spray and then we're going to allow that to stand as well.
All right, so what we're gonna do next is we're gonna go ahead and prepare 30 milliliters of clear resin. So you get that stirred up nicely, make sure it's bubble free. I did let it sit for just a few minutes before I got started on this part. So what I'm doing is I'm just spreading this around in a nice even layer. And then I'm going to be using that popsicle stick to make sure I scrape it all out and to also push it towards the edge. Now my phone does die on me, but what I did was I used a heat gun as well to make sure I spread that out evenly. You see me do it a million times, so just follow those same steps and you know get that done evenly. All right, time for the fun part. So what we're going to do here is you're just going to go ahead and wiggle your tray from the mold. Um, from here, you just kind of pull up the sides, release the sides, and then once you get all the sides released, it should pop right out of the mold for you just like this. So this is how it's going to look on this finished casting and everything. All right, so I'm outside now with my power drill and I'm just adding um, an attachment onto here that's going to allow me to drill a circle hole that is going to be perfect for the size of the um, clock hardware. So using that little circle that I did with the black acrylic paint earlier, um, on that first step, I am going to use that as my guide. I'm going to drill a hole right into the center. Now this was a bit difficult, um, I'm not going to lie, especially with that foil in the middle. So what I would suggest um, in the future is if you do use a foil, make sure it's cut out in the middle um, beforehand. So that way you don't have to drill through that transparency paper because it did cause some discoloration and it looks like it started to pull a bit, um, which wasn't very attractive. Here I'm adding some water because it's definitely just making the drill process go through a whole lot easier and a whole lot smoother. So I'm applying a little bit of pressure but I'm not trying to move too fast with the drill so I'm not um, using it at its full speed. I'm waiting for it to break through and when it breaks through I am able to push that little hole part out. Um, but it's not through yet, so I'm just going to keep going, alternating, adding water, and dumping it out until I slowly push through to the back. Alright, as you can see here, I got a nice clear hole. If it wasn't for that film moving around, it would be nice and clean and it wouldn't have any issues. So I'm cleaning the hole up a little bit further by using a hand drill and I'm just going to use the um, polishing bit to just kind of smooth that out a bit so that way there's no jagged edges and no sharpness. I'm flipping it over. I'm doing the same exact thing. This is super easy and I got this little hand drill off of Amazon as well. Alright, so now I'm using my sanding block to clean up those rough edges from the meniscus effect, which I've talked about numerous times. Google it, meniscus effect. So I'm wiping that off and making sure that there's no debris on here and it's nice and clean for me. Because off camera, what I did was I um, went ahead and created the clock design with the numbers and everything using some um, permanent vinyl. So I use permanent vinyl and I cut it out on my Cricut in a white glossy color and it's very pretty. You can't really see it that well on here because the paper itself is white. I'm going to be transferring this over onto some transfer paper. Um, excuse me, I just had to adjust the camera and everything to make sure that was out of the way. So I am cutting the transfer paper to shape and you're going to see me just apply this transfer paper on top of the um i'm sorry apply the numbers on top of this transfer page pa
paper and I just want to make sure I take my time and make sure it's nice and even because I don't want this to get all crinkled or anything because I made sure that the measurements were on there perfectly as far as the numbers and the distance and the spacing and I also made sure that it aligned with the size of the clock that I had made. So you see me just smoothing the transfer paper onto this and making sure that it's nice and even on there. Use a little squeegee and, you know, press all of that air out and make sure it's nice and flush. Cut around it any excess transfer paper you do not need. So just go ahead and cut that off and tear it up, ball it up, get rid of it. So I'm pressing over the numbers, making sure that they are firmly onto this transfer paper because the transfer paper is going to allow us to transfer it onto our clock mold. So pull that up, remove the white backing, make sure all the numbers and all your little dots come off with it. You may need to use that squeegee as you go to just confirm that they're on all on there. So pull back slowly as you see me doing here. Now I do keep that little middle white part um, because I use that to line up with the middle of my clock where that hole is. So I know if that um, white dot is above the hole then it's centered. So I get that onto the center and then I just start to make sure that it's placed down evenly and I got it exactly how I like it without it um, being pressed down all the way yet. So use the edges of the mold for a guide, get that squeegee back up, and then you can start pressing down on your numbers on top of that transfer paper. And then you can kind of lift up as you go as well to make sure that everything's in place. Um, do a little bit at a time so that way you can make sure that you get each dot down in the spot where it needs to go because you don't want this to be off balance because it... Um, yeah off balance because it is a clock so it's going to be telling time and you want it to be a functional piece now of course if you don't care and it's just for decor then you can go ahead and you know do it how you like and you don't have to be as tedious with this all right so pull back that clear film evenly and bam step done All right, so now we have our clock hardware here. I got this off of Amazon, um, how to put it together. The instructions are available with the clock and they are available on the listing as well. And there is online, it's everywhere. So you just go ahead and place the pieces step by step. Make sure everything is adjusted how you need it. And then you're just going to place that onto the back side of the clock and push it through the hole. Now be careful pushing it through the hole because um, it is a little snug. And due to that hole being the exact size of the um, clock piece because I measured ahead of time. Now on this part you're just going to be adding the hands on. You know, you start with the hour hand and then you go to the um, minute hand and then from there you do the second hand right there on top. Now when you do get to the second hand, I want you to make sure that you do press it down till you hear this click sound and then that's how you will know for sure that it's in place and everything so that way you don't have to worry about it falling off and then this will also make sure that all your um, clock hands are snug in place so that way the clock is functional so this right here is our finished product guys she is absolutely beautiful I am so proud of this clock this is the back side you just pop the battery in right there it's super shiny on here it has a little clock gear so that way you can set the time accordingly flipping it over to the front that is how our chain looks look at that it is a beautiful little frame for the clock that we have here 
I love how the numbers on this clock pop out. I love how these foils look. I love how the alcohol ink looks. This just turned out absolutely beautifully. If you do try this out, make sure you do tag me. Let me know. Comment below. Tell me how much you love it. Follow my Instagram account and tag me on there. Tag Bougie Hippie Tutorials. I can't wait to see what you guys do with this. Thanks for joining me and I will see you guys next time. <laughs> Bye now.